Over 60% of people in the world may have a magnesium deficit and be experiencing symptoms such as tiredness, abdominal discomfort, memory loss, or leg cramps, without realizing that this is due to a lack of this mineral, a vital element that intervenes in hundreds of functions in our body. So I'm going to explain to you what is the most frequent symptom of this deficit, how we can reverse it through diet, and what will be the best magnesium supplement depending on my situation. Today I share with you the warning signs of low magnesium and how to replenish it naturally. Magnesium is a mineral on which more than 350 biochemical reactions of our body depend and which plays a crucial role in essential functions for our organs such as energy production, heart contraction, or our memory. Now, a blood test is not going to be able to tell me how I really have the levels of this mineral. And this is because only 1% of the magnesium in our body is found in the blood. The rest is going to be stored in our tissues and organs, fulfilling all its tasks. So, it's going to be fundamental if I experience the symptoms of this deficit that affects almost two-thirds of the world's population, that I don't wait to replenish it as soon as, and if possible, naturally. So, today we are going to see those symptoms that are going to warn me that I'm making a magnesium deficit. Which sign of all is the most frequent? And then we will see how we are going to recover this mineral through diet, and in case of resorting to magnesium supplements, which one is the one that suits me to take. Firstly, we have a common symptom that I can experience if I have a magnesium deficit, muscular weakness. And it's that this mineral is crucial for the contraction and relaxation of muscles. Without enough magnesium, my muscles cannot function correctly, which is going to lead me first to a sensation of weakness and muscle fatigue, which can end up leading me to other symptoms of magnesium deficiency, muscle cramps and tingling in hands and feet. Now, why does this happen? It turns out that magnesium is responsible for any order from our brain to reach our muscles well. And it is that if we do not have enough of this mineral, the transmission of this order through our nerves is going to be slowed down, which will lead to our muscle fibers not going to receive the information to contract, relax, or maintain their tone properly. And therefore, I'm going to end up suffering weakness. And not only that, in addition, our muscles do not only live on these orders that come from the brain, they also need calcium to contract and relax. And the one in charge of regulating this calcium from the muscle cells is precisely magnesium. So this double function of magnesium is going to make that if we have a deficit of this mineral, we are going to notice it at a muscular level in early stages. The second sign that I can experience if I have a magnesium deficit is insulin resistance. And it's that this great enemy of my health and my figure has a direct relationship with the deficit efficiency of this mineral, since magnesium is going to act in processes necessary for insulin to act in the cells, taking the sugar out of the blood to use it correctly. That is, when there is a deficiency of magnesium, we can make insulin resistance that is going to lead us to elevated levels of glucose in the blood on one hand, and to accumulation of fat in our abdomen and organs on the other. So, if I have this magnesium deficit and replenish it with the measures that we are going to see, I'm going to see a big change in my health by reducing blood sugar levels, while it can help me to reduce my abdominal perimeter. In third place, we have the cardiovascular symptoms, being the most frequent hypertension. And this is because in our blood vessels, magnesium is going to help eliminate excess calcium from the arterial walls, making them relax and therefore combating hypertension from the very base. Moreover, magnesium supplementation has an evidence level A against hypertension. That is, in many studies, we see that taking magnesium for at least six months decreases our blood pressure. Among them, in a meta-analysis of hypertensive people who were taking medication, the systolic blood pressure, the high one, decreased 18.7 points on average in the group that took medication plus magnesium compared to the one that only took medication. Of course, this does not mean that we should change any medical treatment for magnesium, but it is going to be a very good idea to propose to our doctor to incorporate this mineral into our treatment, if despite the drugs we are not achieving the optimal range. And this is not all. Magnesium is essential for the regulation of our heart rhythm by helping to correctly transmit electrical impulses in the heart, something necessary for our heartbeats to be regular and energetic. And besides, it is going to allow our heart to contract and relax properly because it regulates the calcium of its cells and prevents them from overloading. In fourth place, we have pain, something that doctors often underestimate, but that is very limiting for the quality of life of many people. And it's that magnesium is going to be in charge of regulating the sending of pain signals to our brain, which means that it can help to reduce our perception of pain, something that can change the life of many people who live with chronic pain. But this does not end here. Magnesium is not going to be limited to helping me perceive less pain. 
It also has a role in the origin of this by directly attacking inflammation and providing me with a relaxing effect on my musculature. Now, the number one symptom of a magnesium deficiency is undoubtedly fatigue. Many people have more fatigue than they should and the basic activities of daily life are uphill for them. And in many of these cases, which we attribute to age or a seasonal issue, it could simply be due to a lack of magnesium. And it turns out that magnesium is necessary for our body to produce ATP, the main energy molecule we have. So if I lack magnesium, my ATP synthesis is going to be compromised, leading me to a decrease in the energy I have available in my day to day. And making tasks as simple as lifting a simple bag of groceries or climbing a flight of stairs become challenging missions. In sixth place, we have another frequent symptom, insomnia. And this is because magnesium is going to help us have a deeper and more restorative sleep in several ways. First, by regulating in our brain the GABA receptors, a neurotransmitter that plays an essential role in inducing sleep and relaxation. In fact, this GABA is precisely the target in which benzodiazepines, the most used drug in all countries against insomnia, act, and in whose use Spain is the sad world champion, closely followed by the United States and other countries, especially in Central America, where its use is also increasing. Another way magnesium has to improve our sleep is in the regulation of our biological clock, the circadian rhythm, by regulating the release of melatonin, the sleep hormone, and ensuring that its levels are adequate so that our brain interprets correctly when we need to sleep. And third, magnesium is going to help us sleep thanks to the control of anxiety by regulating the release of cortisol, the stress hormone. Now this regulation is not only going to be important for our rest, and it is that we have recently seen that cortisol at high levels acts as a toxin in our brain and therefore accelerates its deterioration. So through this triple function, magnesium is going to help me not only achieve better quality sleep, but also to protect my brain from premature deterioration. In seventh place, we have digestive symptoms such as abdominal discomfort or heavy digestion. And this is because magnesium is essential for intestinal movements and the relaxation of the smooth muscle in our gastrointestinal tract. So, in a state of magnesium deficiency, the foods in my diet are not going to be able to propel themselves properly through my digestive tube, slowing down my digestion. And now that we know how to detect a possible deficit in time, it is convenient to know how to replenish it first naturally with food, and then, what are going to be the three best magnesium supplements for our body among the dozens of them that exist and their dose? Firstly, we have green leafy vegetables such as spinach and chard. And it's that 100 grams of these raw vegetables contain 25% of the daily amount we need of magnesium. Secondly, we have legumes, especially lentils and chickpeas, since 100 grams of these legumes are going to have 15% of the daily recommended amount of this mineral. And thirdly, we have nuts and seeds such as almonds or walnuts, but with a special mention to pumpkin seeds, since just a handful of these seeds are going to have approximately half of the daily amount we need of magnesium. As you can see, incorporating these foods, for example, in a salad can be very comfortable and an excellent strategy to reach our necessary magnesium intake. Now, if I have already tried to replenish my magnesium with food and I have not been able to, either due to an absorption problem or due to the intake of medications that may interfere with the magnesium in my diet, it will suit me to think about supplementing myself. And here it is crucial to choose the right type of magnesium supplement. First, there's magnesium 3 on 8, which has the unique ability to cross the brain's blood-brain barrier. So it's going to have benefits on our cognitive function but also on our well-being since serotonin, the main neurotransmitter responsible for our mood needs magnesium to synthesize. Second, we have magnesium glycinate. This type of magnesium is bound to glycine, an amino acid that facilitates its passage through our intestinal wall, which will make us absorb it better. And also, glycine is related to an enhancement of melatonin in our body. So many studies have shown that it can improve the quality of our rest. And third, we have magnesium malate. This type of magnesium is bound to malic acid, which is another substance that improves magnesium absorption. It's an option that's going to be very interesting for those who suffer from fatigue or fibromyalgia myalgia since malic acid participates in our energy production at the cellular level. And the fact is that there are many other options, but I have chosen these three first for the benefits they provide beyond magnesium and also because they are more absorbable in our body. Now, it's very important to know that any of the signs of magnesium deficiency that we've seen may be due to other medical causes. So it's going to be a very good idea to implement as soon as possible all the measures we've seen to increase our magnesium levels, but without delaying a consultation with my doctor so that they can rule out any other pathology or condition that's causing me these symptoms. And thank you very much for staying with me until now. What do you think about the benefits of magnesium? 
Do you usually consider it in your diet? I read you down here in the comments. Take care a lot.